Lucky time explosion Here to make you move Dancing like the Charleston Don't you dare snooze Trumpets blowing, saxophones wailing Everything's jumping, ain't no time for failing. Grab a pot. Hey ben, what? Do you know what rhymes with plucky slime corrosion? No, what? It's lucky time <laughs> explosion. Oh my hey. god! <laughs> 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 What's up? Welcome. It is Friday. Ow, ow. Thank end of God. the week, right? <laughs> Thank God. We have a couple of special guests here. We got John and Alex De La O. In the house. What is up, y'all? What's Not up? Much, Happy Friday. Yeah. Fry Friday. Fry it's Friday. <laughs> Friday. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So John is a painter yes. and a collage artist as well. Yes. Uh and Alex, you musician. Yeah. You guys play music together. You have a cool band. Are we gonna get a treat later? Oh, we're gonna get a big treat yes. later. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, we've been doing this segment where we have musical guests on, and then um, I've got like a separate playlist on the YouTube just for musical performances. That's cool. awesome. So this will be the new Saturday Night Live. That's right. Place to see. This Tiny is gonna be better, or the better third, than Saturday the third Night musical Live. Yeah, stint we, we're gonna have. Here. That's right. For third separate musical guest. You guys yeah. are branching out. I really like that. Yeah, we are. Cool. So we go. Ba we go way back, right? Ugh, please. <laughs> <laughs> buddy old pal <laughs> buddy old pal yeah. yeah yep yep we go back a very long time you know it's actually really alarming how how long we've known each other when i when i meet people at openings and they're like oh how long have you been involved with soul i'm like oh, i go back you're like way back with brandon <laughs> to like uh, at least 10 years I that's mean, true probably more so yeah i think um i might have actually met you before i met morgan Wow. Whoa. And I've known Whoa. Morgan for like a decade. Oh, wow. So that's no, crazy. No, we've known you for quite some time at this point. So. Nice. Yeah. A lot of a lot of wonderful openings. Some were hotter than others. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> there are people that follow Brandon around. He is a cult leader. So, I guess so. You know, yeah, it's sweet. like, oh, he's moved over there. Let's go follow Brandon Wise yeah. Carver. I mean, it's a kind of culty sounding leader name, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. People Mr. think Wise it's a, Carver. Yeah. People think I make it up. It could be an investment <laughs> firm. It could be a cult. Right, Wise Carver Industries, Wise Carver Capital, you yeah. know, because yeah. we've been watching Billions, so like it's that's a very Billions type of name. You're I, the Carver of Truth. Uh, yeah, it's not. <laughs> it actually means hide tanner, and it used to be pronounced Weisgruber. Oh, uh, wow. and it's the stinkiest job of the Middle Ages, where I would wow. be waiting around me because I have ancestral memories. Would be waiting <laughs> around. In a stinky <laughs> pool of lye, slapping skins against the stone. Wow! Do you uh, have um, past lives that you recall doing this in? Or yes, absolutely. I was put into a tank. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I don't even remember what I had for breakfast, much less if yeah. I had a past. Do you ever have um, <laughs> like ancient dreams, like yeah. um, like dreams of like a past time? You know how Tony Soprano pictured himself in Italy like a hundred years ago. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not, I don't have period dreams. They're always pretty contemporary. Yeah, I don't either. Um, because <laughs> I don't know what period that would be. And Ooh, I don't yeah. think it would be very glamorous. Like, yeah. you know, you have this period dream of you as a, a, um, a leader or some sort of knight. Like, I, again, I'd be slapping skins on rocks. <laughs> yeah, so. uh, like a peasant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. That's I, cool. I block it out. But you, you got know, lucky with that translation. It's, it's, Wise it's true. Carver has a nice ring. Yeah, it sounds way better. I think it was like an Isla, Ellis Island thing. Yeah. yeah. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was an Ellis Island thing where like they anglified my Dutch name. Mm -hmm. Wasn't wow. Anglo enough. They were like, they were like, we need to make this more Needs improvement. Normal. So yeah. you're, you have a cool name though. Yeah, that's your, true. Your last name ends with an, uh, just a letter. Yes, it's actually... Um, it's really spooky, the origins. It's it's from Spain and it comes mm. from um it's basically the Virgin Mary and the monks used to sing this like liturgical chant. Oh. And they, and it was a long protracted O sound. And it was supposed to commemorate the moment that Jesus was conceived in the belly of the Virgin Mary. What? And they do it every year. So you just see hundreds of people from the church is going oh down the streets of seville Amazing. spain and um i had no idea i just thought it was like sounded cool and it meant nothing because de la oh you know it's usually right. de la rosa de la vega yeah and i was like de la oh it's probably maybe that was a, a typo but then sure enough i looked it up it's got these spooky catholic <laughs> origins you know oh, it was man. legit yep. i'm gonna be so annoying now because now i'm gonna see i'm gonna be like john de la oh, oh. <laughs> 
cool. That's actually really cool, though. Thanks. Yeah. 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 So uh, tell people a little bit about your work. I'm going to show some because we have a green screen. So oh, cool. And we have artists on. So I figure this is a good use of the green screen. Amazing. Uh, we'll flip through a couple of your paintings. Just tell people how you got started, like what you do and what you think of your own work. And then oh. I'll tell you uh, why it's even better than you think. And your oh. process, of course, because you have a very interesting process. Thanks. Yeah. Multiple Gee. stages. So um, I started in high school and I was a big, um, I was a big copier. I like to really get old issues of National Geographic, Time Magazine, and I would do these really detailed kind of pencil watercolor drawings where I would copy from source materials. So it just goes to show I didn't get very far from that. I, I still really rely on photography and uh, the collage process even more now, but I just sort right. of like exploited it later. Well, you're but, drawing from photos. Yes. Not, yeah. I was right. always drawing from pictures. But you were always into the the vintage vibe. Yes. What What do you feel is a reason for that? I think it had a lot to do with um, the movies that I grew up like really liking, you know, like I loved stuff like matinee and, you know, um, you know, radio days and uh, just like, you know, back to the future, of course, anything to do with the 50s. I feel like the mid to late 90s when I came of age, that was a big thing, like yeah. Yeah. doing period 1920s, 1930s movies, gangster flicks. And, right. right. Um, and my dad is actually an old head. He's 87. So he's a little he's 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 up there. And uh, growing up, it was a lot of just stories about old Hollywood and playing a lot of doo-wop and 50s stuff. So while I was immersing myself in the movies, I was hearing the music in my dad's car. And I think I just had this like fantasy world where I was I was a 1940s <laughs> or 50s guy. And I it doesn't that. seem love that it. hard to do yeah. where you're at in Brooklyn. Yes. It's kind of like, that's kind of where that was happening then. And it didn't. it's one Definitely. of the places that didn't change so fast. Although it's changing a lot now, right? Yes, it is. It's finally getting a little different, a little yeah. kind of modernized, but... Bay Ridge is pretty um, antiquated, I would say. It's got yeah, it's a little old. bit of a time capsule. We're yeah. we're kind of finally seeing some changes there that everyone's like, oh my god, but. Um, it's super far out in Brooklyn. You're so. finally getting like a gourmet popsicle store. Yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. More like, coffee, coffee everywhere. Ju everywhere, and juice everywhere. Lots of uh, bu boba tea, bubble tea. Bubble and you know, tea. people yeah. just people found out it was a cheaper neighborhood to live in because it's so far from everything. So mm. now, of course, rents have gone. Up have, have the weed shops <laughs> God, taken over? Gone yeah. Everywhere. Oh yeah, oh, but yeah. they're getting cracked down on a little bit. Are yeah, they? that was mm. an interesting thing. How quickly a lot of these weed uh, shops popped up, and now I am finally seeing a lot of these are starting to close down yeah like the they shops, are it's well, finally changing that's funny. this actually this morning i was like hanging in bed with wifey and she's on um some sort of subreddit for new york where people complain about stuff and there's one like up on 86 and there's like a new weed shop and they're like there's a new weed shop what do we do about this <laughs> yeah and then, like the whole comments were just like are you like first day in new york like what's wrong people with you? are so weird about it and you never know like how someone's gonna react like right. some people are like this is great and then some people are very <laughs> angry about it you know um yeah. but we had a couple of, of shops in bay ridge that were seized and closed and it became sort of a, a big like but that oh speaks my God, to how conservative like, the neighborhood kind of is. Yeah. It's just they were just like, there's weed by a Catholic school. Like, we've got a crack. There was oh, one yeah. down the street from like uh, Our Lady of Angels. Jesus that was, is I'm offended. Su yeah, I'm it was surprised big. that there's no law about that. I mean, listen, I smoke a lot of weed, but I'm I'm, I'm surprised that that they would allow oh, there's laws it's just it's new york like we're, we're a lawless town kind of like you know well yeah, yeah and there's, a little bit there's so many that are operating illegally like it would it would be more it than a full-time like job to the, shut them all down yeah definitely. right uh the discreet ones survive a little bit more than the ones yeah. with the loud branding you yeah know? we had one that had like uh the monopoly man with like join on right. the outside why is it always why is it always <laughs> always always rick and morty yeah <laughs> yeah i never like, quite understood that there's rick and so morty weed shops tons of bongs with just rick and morty like you get like uh, you know a patch of weed it's like rick and morty i like wow. the i like the I political it, weed the oh my god sleepy yes. joe biden and obama weed and trump have, weed yeah, we've gotten we've funny. gotten obama weed and, and they kind of did him dirty like i was yeah. like obama's better looking yeah it didn't this. really like, look like him very much <laughs> it, it was going way back and this is like probably 2001 i remember taking an e-pill in the shape of obama's head that's, that's <laughs> amazing obama oh, wow <laughs> that's actually and it fucked me up i just saw did you feel weird. presidential when you were on oh it? i felt <laughs> beyond <laughs> that. I felt you walk in with the swag <laughs> i actually saw something really funny it was like an old uh cart it was like an old uh, video clip on youtube but they left in just like a really small snippet of um a commercial for an obama basketball 
Wow. It was like the Obama basketball, <laughs> the presidential basketball, Jeez. order now. And then it goes into this <laughs> video about how uh, Ween inspired SpongeBob. Yeah. But I digress. Really? Wow. Ween yeah. inspired SpongeBob? They did. I'll, we'll link to that video. Just we wow. Have to I had no idea. That. That's awesome. I didn't know either. And I'm a big fan of both. And Yeah, no, I think SpongeBob has always been referred, uh, associated with Beat pot, pot, <laughs> the weed culture. Like, this is a great one to watch oh, no. if you're stoned. Ween. Believe, believe the it band or Ween. Oh, the yeah. band Ween. W-E-E-N. And weed, too. Yeah. yeah. But okay. um, there's even one episode. I didn't know that. Uh, they have a, a pa Pantera song in one of the SpongeBob they make, episodes. They make a reference to a movie called Julian Donkey Boy. Oh, sure. Yeah. In, Harmony in, Corinne. Yeah. In SpongeBob. And I, like, sat up wow. straight when they did that. I was Whoa. like, oh. Because if you know the premise of that movie, it's pretty dark, and it's just like an old, an old man drinking cough syrup, kind of right. Like, they had the um, they had the <laughs> the um, Werner Herzog fish spraying down another fish, going, "Stop your moody grooving, stop it, the moody grooving." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh shit!" I just watched Julian Donkey Boy. That's crazy. Wow. I, that's deep, one deep that reference. I have not seen, but the one movie of his that I have seen that most people have not is a movie called Ken Park. Oh yeah. And if you've ever seen Ken Park. You know what? I've weirdly seen it. that movie. You've yeah. seen Ken Park? It's yes. Up, right? God bless you. This was like it, years it's ago. It's not easy and to find either. Don't ask me to recant the plot. What's but the yes. <laughs> is that where he goes and gets beat up everywhere? Or Isn't that's it about a, one? yeah, no, it was no. dark. It's, it's dark. It's real dark. Okay. It's okay. about brutal. unaliving yourself. Yeah. Okay, okay, gotcha. <laughs> and you've seen it. I've seen, you made me watch it, yeah. You God forced me to watch wow. it, and then afterwards, I, mean, I had to consider never talking to you again. But yeah. and, and Gumbo, no. of you don't forget it. It's, it's you know similar to the rest of his movies, but this one is really provocative and really sexual driven, and mm, it's mm. just very taboo. I yeah. guess would be the word. Kind of what he does. Oh, I heard from. Um, I went to this thing with some of the people we know from con artists. Yeah, uh, it's at this church off the off the park. It's basically AA for artists, and wow. like I knew like five people, and they're all just walking around in a circle. Talking about what they're doing, pitching Whoa. a show, but like, it's not like people are going, you know, come to my show on this, you know, next Friday, and it's all just like a pitch circle. They'll be like, I'm having a show and I'm feeling very anxious about it, and they'll talk about I it. I think that's cool. It was actually kind of cool, and there's like five people from uh, Connors that we recognize. Is it there. like AA or is it actually AA for artists? No, it's like AA, oh, okay. and I don't think it is. Um, I don't know if it's meant to be just for artists or if it's just a coincidence. So you can go if you do have a drinking problem. <laughs> Yeah. You could, no, actually, yeah, that, they were talking about that. My friend who invited me, uh, embarrassingly, was like, hi, uh, you know, I'm blah, 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 and uh, I'm getting real fucked up lately. I'm good drinking and smoking as much as I can, getting as fucked up wow. as possible. So, a few people were like, <laughs> we like that. Me too. We like that. Wow. Anyway, speaking of, uh, we're talking about SpongeBob and Ween. Uh, speaking of music, uh, we're going to have you guys perform at the end of this podcast. Yes. Uh, but tell me when you guys started playing together. Uh, ooh. Is that before you oh guys my got God. Like, together, together together? Or? No, so so we've been together uh, for many years and I was, you know, we were best friends before we got together and John's been playing music forever. Um, yeah, and, I think um, I would say like uh, 16 years by now, at least. No, no, maybe more. Well, you, you were a visual artist before you became a musician. Uh, they kind of were in tandem. They were Ooh, parallel with each awesome, other. That's awesome, actually. I, ch I chose like two very, very hard things to do at the same time. Yeah. I was like, let me, just, <laughs> let, me just, let me just, you know, shoot shoot in and the bucket and just do yeah. both. really good at both of them. Oh, thank you. That's <laughs> um, very sweet. But, you know, he had bands like before I even knew him and then we got together and he was in a rock band and... You know, what I, was our name then? It was was it two girls kill boy? Yes, it was two girls kill boy, and that Very came after. Emo. Was yeah. that before or after two <laughs> girls one cup? <laughs> <laughs> it was before, and then and everyone made that joke, and I was like, Ooh, and you're oh. like, oh my band uh, names. And, <laughs> and was that after the eligible bachelors? Yeah, eligible okay. bachelors was the first one. That was so. The first what are you guys going by too. now? Uh, so right now the solo project is um, John De La O, of okay. course. But um, our band is Band of Young Saints, but we use an acronym. We do boys. B oh, B -O -Y -S. nice. Yeah. B O Y S. Yeah. Band of Young Saints. I was going for like a 50 Street Gang kind of vibe, you know, yeah. the right. Young Saints. And then, you know, I, cool. I added the band of on top, you know. I think cool. it's really funny that our podcast uh, abbreviates to LTE, like, you know, the phone, the cell phone yeah, I was service. Just thinking <laughs> that. What, yeah. what were some oh, yeah. of the band names that you had when you had? Because oh, I know God. you've been in a million, but what well, are some Bushwick of the Bushwick Gospel Singers was probably the most. Uh, that's uh, awesome. that's awesome. the very most similar. Very similar vibe. Yeah. Okay. That was the most public. That's one you can actually Google or like, you know, YouTube. 
But my favorite was probably a noise band. Uh, we started uh, called the Mullington Family Talent Show. That's, That's amazing. Awesome. And the reason we called it the Mullington Family Talent Show is because <laughs> we were all hanging out in a park and there's this gazebo in the park and we hear like people set up like a PA system and we hear, welcome to the second annual Mullington Family Talent Show. <laughs> And we look over and it's just like a family <laughs> and they have like, they're having their talent. There's like a few of them. Yeah. And it's just kids like lip syncing to Britney Spears or running around being silly. Uh, I but thought it was going to be like a Carter family. Kind yeah. Of thing. But we were looking, we were looking for a band name at the time. And like, as soon as they said, you know, welcome to the Mullington family talent show. Like all of us just kind of looked at each other and we're like, that's it. That's it. That's awesome. it. Yeah. It's weird when it hits. Like the, the two band names that would stick out to me that I used to have is the first one is Egon. Instead of Egon Spangler, it was Egon Strangler. That's good. That's cool. That's good. <laughs> that then really rolls it, off the tongue. After that was Brainwise. Brainwise. Nice. And Punk. then Baba Punk. Yaga. But the thing is, there's like so Yaga. many Baba Yaga bands. You know? Oh, that makes sense. It's hard yeah. to find us on Spotify, but we exist on Spotify. I'm okay. surprised. Yes. That's such a unique name and that there's a bunch of bands named that. That's shocking. Is to it me. like a name for a, is it like a. It's a Scandinavian witch. I think she. Oh. I was, oh. was going to say a wise person, but that sounds more accurate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She lived in a house with wings and would fly away. Oh, it was pretty not cool. terrifying so it's, it's at like all. It's folklore, so that's yeah. why other people have got that real estate. Yeah, yeah. that's so, crazy. Did you say that you came up kind of both of them at the same time? So like, really young, I guess you were doing uh, it from like fifteen beginning. or sixteen. Yeah. Really? So yeah. That time when you start like forming your identity and you're like looking mm -hmm. for what you're going to do forever. Yep. And then actually, I've heard that you know whatever you were doing when you were sixteen. Um, you kind of just stay that way. You know what I mean? Like you stay frozen in, in, oh, in your shit. identity at 16. <laughs> well, I well, you know, create that about myself. I had, I I had really bad music agree. taste around then, so I hope not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, they say for artists that, you know, you kind of stay frozen in that. And I, I'd like to think I'm kind of in the same space. But so, yeah, I was doing music for a long time. We met around, I guess, college time. She was started coming to shows when I was already in my yeah, 20s. I was definitely um, a little bit of like, you know, we were friends, but I was also like... Definitely fangirling out yes, about Yes, we were like an indie, the band. an indie emo three-piece, and she was a big fan. She would come to a lot of shows. And um, when it came time to sort of expand the sound, we were a three-piece. I, I just saw a natural fit. I said, you know, she's got a really great voice, and she knew all yeah. the words, you know, so frankly, that yeah. really helped. Yeah, and I, I had sang in various embarrassing ways growing up in my past. So, you know, I was prepped but not ready really to sing in a rock band so that was actually um a transition for me i was kind mm. of more formally trained so i had to get out of that box and learn how to sing in a rock band which right. um actually takes more work than you would think yeah yeah i, I see these people like <laughs> screaming and doing all these different kinds of uh, yeah. vocalizations and it seems not easy yeah i've yeah. never been able to sing like uh i've been i've played music for a really long time too i was in a choir i was a choir boy yeah like, growing up so like Sing. I can sing, <laughs> but I still have not ever gotten over the like the stage fright. Oh, weird! Uh, of of singing, like we're trying to record myself. So you could even. you could carry a tune first, which is like the opposite of yeah. me, where where I just went up there, almost spoken word and shouting, and yeah. I became a more accurate singer. Well, that's the good way to do anything. You got to throw yeah. yourself into it and yeah. learn. How no, to do no it. one else wanted to do it. So yeah. I was well, just like, going back to your conversation about um, copying uh, art. You know, it's the same thing. You go, you throw, you don't need to go to art school if you just sit down and uh, copy a, b a bunch of other art you like for long yeah. enough. It starts to teach you itself. Right. It starts Absolutely. to come out. And that's how you get so many self taught artists. Did you go to any kind of visual art school? I, well, my high school was a regular high school, it was a public yeah. high school in Brooklyn, Fort Hamilton High School in Bay Ridge. Um, they had a really good art program and I had access to a ton of like um, resources, like she, yeah. materials, like she had, my art teacher had a bunch of old magazines around. So yeah. I would just, I was just that sketchbook guy. And she also was just kind of gearing me up to be a little, you know, art star, uh, go to art college because I was one of the more promising drawers. Right. Um, so yeah. you went to Cooper Union, right? I briefly, briefly? I, had, I had a stint. Yes. <laughs> you had a stint there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there for, I think a semester. And Did you do one of like their... The, like programs or did you get accepted into their I did. thing? I did. I went to the Saturday program for like mm, three years nice. in high school. I did like a, uh, a lot of drawing classes because that was kind of my focus. Yeah. And then I took the home test. Once I failed, I did not get in. Yeah. And then I took it again um, a year out of high school and I made it. Made that's the amazing. Yeah, thanks. I mean, and that's then, really hard. Like people understand like back before Cooper Union was like a paid. Now mm -hmm. you just pay to go there. Yeah. Uh, and everyone's been real mad about it. But that was like a 
like the Ivy League of yes. art schools. It was like very the tippy top. Yeah, very selective. They, I think they only took about 60 people a year from thousands. I, guess, I, I was trying to transfer in. I wish I had uh, in retrospect when I first got here in 2008. I was like, I want to go to Cooper, <laughs> uh, but I never thought I could. And I was busy working and trying to survive. And I never really applied. I really should have. And uh, because I knew I would be a transfer student mm -hmm. and they take seven a year. Yeah. for transfer students and i was like am i gonna get top one seven i mean yeah. the worst part is i knew people in the school i probably could have uh, yeah. maybe maybe i would have had like an iota of a chance but it's a really huge accomplishment yeah. to get accepted there. thanks so cool. yeah the window's really small but you know i wasn't ready i think at the time i was a little green um and i was thrown i was living in the dorms and i was i had a bank account and i had a bunch of friends that sold weed and could get coke <laughs> and I just started, I was, I was just partying. I yeah. was just, I was living that Basquiat dream. And, you know, I don't, I don't know that Basquiat could have made it in Cooper either. It's very, <laughs> strict. it's very strict, you know I mean? It's, it doesn't reflect your talent. It's just, you have to be a disciplined person. To right. Go there. You've got to show up to class. And I was really deep in my partying bag. So I got the boot, um, you know, and, and ri rightly so. Um, <laughs> but, you know, after that, I sort of licked my wounds. And then I went to SVA after that. And I finished there. Another grade school? I got a really good scholarship because, you know, it is expensive. You know, yeah. it's another pricey school so i got it i got an almost full ride there too and um and that was a little more suited to me and kind of developing my own vision because cooper likes to break you down you right know? right right it's like uh, that the drumline movie what's the drum movie oh a whiplash it's like whiplash <laughs> of art schools where they want yeah, to destroy you as much as possible and make you unlearn like everything camp, basically yeah like Ooh. if you can take this and cry and you know suffer then you know maybe you'll um, do maybe you'll be an activist or do installations later but. i actually would have thrived probably because <laughs> my my school and similar music as well i was a music major uh, in junior college and i'm not sure if i told the story already on the pod or not but uh when i was uh studying music i had an amazing fundamentals teacher he was going to be the main teacher he was just really inspiring really great like a movie like he's really out, out there and like over overly what do you say like animated yeah M mr holland's opus vibes yeah big mm -hmm. mr holland oh, he's like he's like banging his head against the board and everything he's going crazy and i lean over to my friend and i go this dude's gonna have an aneurysm and he did <laughs> a week oh, later my God. I'm sorry nervous left no, no, for sure. yeah he died just oh in my front of God. Class, like, felled over bled out and I thought I murdered him. I was like, oh I killed my him God. With my mind. Did anybody run up there to try to like help him? Of course. Yeah. We're all freaked out. Yeah. It's like your, your professor falls over, starts Let bleeding out. You're like, oh, you're my like, oh my God. Oh my God. You were clairvoyant. In that I, yeah. Moment. I, I think I just, I tell myself now that I just noticed it, but I was like fucked up That's for like, like a, a couple movie. months. I, was I mean, like, of course, when you witness something like that, I was like walking around going, I can't think about anything. Extremely I can't think dramatic. about anything. I'm going to kill people with my brain. Yeah. Uh, and then I got over it and was like, okay, you're not that important. And it was just happened and you Jeez. observed his behavior wow uh, but that's when i started studying art and i would not be sitting here right wow. now we would have never met if that yeah. didn't happen because uh um, oh, cool i kind of like doodling and drawing yeah but no, everybody you're, you're great artist. so you're saying it's a good thing that the teacher died <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in a sick way kind of he, he died yeah. and brandon the artist was born was right? born like, yeah. yeah it was like well, that's the cycle of life, right? It was. But for me, it's like school. Like I, I say you don't need art school, and I don't think you do, but like I got a lot out of it, actually. So I'm kind of hypocritical from it, from saying that, because I had doodled, and people were always like, oh, you're a good drawer. But I would look at it and I'd say, you know, this is stupid. It's not very good. It looks like bad comic books or like Tim Burton kind of vibes. Mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, and then I went to study and was forced to do like blind contour, life drawing. Right. And then I was like, holy shit, I actually can draw. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's no how it otherwise. usually starts for me. It was like I was very into R. Crumb. Yeah. And, um, you know, Edward Gorey and Charles Adams and these kind of cartoonists. And uh, that kind of got uh more evolved into a fine art thing but it was the sa the saturday program is great i actually got more out of the weekend classes than cooper itself yeah just because it was like you know three years every saturday drawing models and that, i got my chops up you yeah. know so to speak and Foundation. Yeah, yeah yeah gotta get your chops up yeah and it's interesting i know you don't have that much time left but uh About your process minutes. You start with making a collage. Right, yes. Yeah. Mm. So I'll make the collage first. I acquire a bunch of old magazines, um, old media of, of all kinds, you know, at thrift stores and stuff. And then I'll assemble a collage with glue sticks and stuff, you know, about yay big. And then I put it under like an old school projector. And then I get my line drawing in, you know, Andy Warhol style. And then I sort of go in and hand paint and try my best to replicate the atmosphere and the tears and 
uh, uh, the 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 original the colors, everything. About yeah, it. as, as yeah. close as possible. Sometimes I get closer to the mark, but sometimes not. But you know, it's yeah, still very cool process. It, it, I'm making my life hard, is what I'm doing. <laughs> I, can, I can really just frame the collages and sell them as they are, and right. leave it there. But sometimes well, it's just it's just as uh, I as like, a collage I like artist to suffer. I I am intimidated by painting, so mm. I, it blows my mind when I see your work because Thanks. it's like something that I've always wanted to do, but like I'm just a little bit intimidated to do it. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I'll uh, you have inspired me to take there the next go. step and, and maybe do it. But yeah, no, yeah, I, I, I love the transition from small collage to large scale painting, and and you do it so well, and I think it's so cool. Thank so. you, thank you for noticing. Yeah, I, do, yeah. I do feel like um, oftentimes. Uh, well, sometimes people confuse them for collages, which is yeah. the best compliment, where they're like, Definitely. is this an actual collage? And I say, no, it's painted. Um, that's great. But I think that people, um, when they when they can see and appreciate the fact that I'm kind of going this extra mile, so to speak, it's really cool. And then, But I think my drawing and painting foundation has a lot to do with that. Um, I didn't want to start doing sort of like, you know, just draw, painting from one photo or just traditional life drawing, even though I can. So I said, now that I've acquired these painting and drawing skills, how can I sort of like unlearn it or kind of take it, pivot it somewhere else where it's a mm. little clever, you know? Yeah, yeah. love yeah. it. Big fan. Thanks. Yeah, your, your visual work has a lot of um, kind of pop feel to it, but yes. then you look deeper and there's like more going on there than just, uh, you know, making references to pop culture or whatever's hot. It's like, you know, stories, the little stories that you stick into the corners. Yeah. Thank you. I love Thank the you. noir vibe. Like, yeah, big noir yeah, it's, vibes. It's huge. Yes. It's awesome. Detective, mystery. You, you feel it from your paintings, yeah, you know? Yeah. Like it's suspense, true. you know, you you get all those uh, old-timey vibes, so you're definitely getting a message across. Yes, yeah. thank you. I was yeah. a big um, PBS and Turner Classic Movies kid. Oh, man. So that has a lot to that stepped in, you know, seeped into my to my paintings. Yeah, because they're not like yeah, they're not necessarily always recognizable figures. So it's not like oh, the kids wouldn't recognize who they are. Why? Wyatt, Wyatt, I remember yeah. Wyatt always knew. Wyatt would be like, oh, is that Marion Davies? Oh, yeah, is you know he knew all the old movie stars. So when you get that's like good. someone like that, who's so once in a while, I get someone who's like, that's Clara Bow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know? that's great. Yeah, that's yeah, that's great. Yeah. I wonder, do you do you ever see any like um, younger kids like having a different reaction to it than people who are maybe more familiar with that kind of sort vibe. of a little more of an indifferent i mean they're they're wowed by the technique and the yeah. look of it and the style but the older folks really are just they know the movie stars right yeah. it's, it's interesting you know yeah. with with years and years of uh fashion style changes you know a lot of people go back to certain things True. i feel like we have yet to see uh, people dip back into the early 20s. Yeah, like, I know. People it's have a wonderful come, pair of knickers. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's right. only a matter of time. Yeah, pantaloons. Wait. Oh, yeah, pantaloons. <laughs> it's kind of I already refer, refer to them as pantaloons. Me and you can't wait for that day. Oh, it's going to be We'd so be fun. the streets, twirling <laughs> down. Tiny <laughs> leather. <laughs> Yeah. But this is why it, this is why you should never get rid of clothing because in yeah. twenty years the cycle returns. Yeah. So everything that you had from the nineties, yes, people if they still own it are well, wearing. I think it when trend. Boardwalk Empire came out, there was a lot of a right. little, yeah. There was like costume parties, Boardwalk themed, but true. It was very rare to see people just walking down the street like that with like a straw hat, and yeah, or, you know, right. whatever. It was. Unless you were like, like Mumford and Sons. Do you sons. guys play venue? Do you do you play frequently? Oh, you do. You yeah. you guys perform here and there. Yeah. So oh, cool. we we have a practice space in Gowanus, and we practice all the time, and um, we play as much as we can. And then, of course, we just released, or John and I just released um, his solo project wow. called awesome. Imperial Sleeper. Yeah, Imperial streaming that everywhere. Name. You can yeah, find that music. Is awesome. Yeah, you like it. Thanks. Yeah, I love it. Okay. So yeah. we're gonna actually get to hear some in a couple minutes. Here we got about two minutes left on our clock. Um, cool. Do you want to introduce it? Describe it. What are people about to hear? Yeah. So it's real bedroom, pretty sleepy, lo-fi indie vibes. You know, I'm a big fan of the Beatles and Elliot Smith and um, uh, Nick Drake and that kind of stuff. So it really kind of bled through. And there's even a little bit of bossa nova kind of mm. like sprinklings in there oh, too. Because I'm a favorite. big big fan of bossa and samba, but. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's up on all streaming platforms. It's John De La O, Imperial Sleeper, if people want to hear it. Um, and it's a uh, everywhere now. And we haven't played any shows for it um, yet. We're planning some showcases. So this is probably the first time yeah. we're Ooh, playing these songs. Wow. The record's uh, only publicly. about three weeks old, I think. So Yeah, we practiced, yeah. We practiced with some open mics first before we, we recorded the album. But this awesome. is the, the first proper gig. So this is cool. All right, and what's Very the song lucky. called? Oh, uh, we're gonna do. Oh, so it's one. Uh, we're gonna do. You, yeah. Okay, I think. Um, or you can do a couple. Okay. Uh, I'm. I was thinking my wooden leg. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, oh, 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 oh. that's that's a fun one. Yeah, <laughs> nice title. 
And um, the other one's called uh, Wit's End. Nice. So that's like a folkier kind of one. But. Excellent. My Wooden Leg and Wit's End. That's right. And that's from the solo project. That's from yes. Imperial Sleeper Excellent. by John De La. Oh, yes. There we go. Awesome. All right. I'm excited. Let's get to it. Cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you for joining us again. Enjoy this music as we play out. And thank don't you. Don't forget to subscribe to oh, yeah. a Patreon. Do the thing. Yes. And follow us and subscribe. Yeah. Eric share Gideon. our movies and yeah. share our words. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Eric's, getting, Eric's getting lonely on the Patreon. We got to... He needs some I friends. Know. Go, He's the go king. join. Yeah. yeah, King Eric. Go king meet Eric. him. All right. Enjoy. Peace. we 
you're smiling and now you're frowning at the ends of my rope no hope my little friend loose ends binding me till I Touch the ground, tell me how can you grow? This is just for you and me, so don't you tell a soul. I won't leave you in this sea of shit alone. Morbid, unrealistic fears and a tendency to romanticize. Kid, do some dishes, make some alibis. Good job. Bingo, bangos. Good job. One shot pros. Come I, on. I feel